when we think in terms of the Four Noble Truths, what we're doing right now is developing the fourth truth, developing the path. And as the Buddha said, the heart of the path is right concentration. So focus on your breath. Take a couple of good, long, deep, in and out breaths. Notice where you feel it in the body. Because when we talk about the breath, it's not so much the air coming in and out of the nose. It's the flow of energy in the body. That's the flow of energy that keeps us alive, that allows you to feel the different parts of the body. We tend to think of our sensation of the body as being a solid, and then we have to pump the air in. But from the Buddhist point of view, our first, most immediate sensation of the body is the energy. So as you breathe in, there's a flow of energy that allows the air to come in and go out. Where do you feel it? Focus your attention there. Try to breathe in a way that feels good. You can experiment with different kinds of breathing. Long, short, or in long, out short, in short, out long. Heavy, light, fast, slow, deep or shallow. Hold in mind the picture of how the breath can flow through the body. And try to find a mental picture that allows for the breath to flow everywhere. and then evaluate how well it's going. You can try different perceptions. You can try different ways of breathing. This element of experimentation is important, because we're not here just to force ourselves to see things the way the Buddha saw them. We're here to develop our own sensitivity, because it's through our sensitivity that we develop discernment. We see things as they're actually happening, and then can do something about it. Then we settle the mind down like this, first so that it just gets some rest. We're frazzled by the way we live in the world, and it's good to have a time and a place for yourself just to drop all your responsibilities outside. and create a good home for the mind right here. As I was saying earlier in the week, most of us are like the carpenters who build beautiful buildings, say, in Bangkok, but they live in tiny little shacks. Throw a little bit of corrugated iron, a little bit of plywood together. That's where they live. And yet they're building beautiful buildings for everybody else to stay in. The mind tends to be like that. It's building a good place for the body to live and for your family. It's through your work, both outside and inside the house, to make the house a good place to live. But the mind itself gets neglected. It's living in a little shanty. So now you're using the breath, using your perceptions of the breath and your thoughts about the breath. You've got a good feeling in here. That can be your home. Give yourself a good home to stay in. As you get well settled here, there comes a point where you start taking an interest in what you're doing, after enjoying the sense of well-being that comes. And this is how you develop your insight, because those factors that go into creating a good sense of concentration, the form of the body, which is the breath, the feeling of ease that you get from the breath, the perceptions you hold in mind about the breath. And your thoughts, thinking about the breath, evaluating it, and your awareness of all these things, those are called five aggregates. In Pali, the word is kanda, it means group. And as the Buddha said, when we cling to these things in the wrong way, they cause suffering. When we create them in the right way, they 
we form part of the path. But it's in getting to know them as part of the path that you begin to really get to know them for what they are. Because otherwise they're just names in a book. You hear about the names and you say, well, yeah, there are these things happening in my mind. But the best way to get to know these things happening in your mind is to play with them. To create something good out of them. It's a basic principle that the things you know best are the things you do, the things you make. It's like eating food. The people who really know the food are the ones who cook it, because they know what has to be done. You can eat the food and you can maybe taste what's in it, if your taste buds are really good. But there, you'll be more perceptive if you've actually had practice in making that kind of food yourself. And then when you become to appreciate it. It's like years back when we made a <clears throat> when we made a Buddha image at one time I said it, and John Fung wanted to have some amulets to go inside, eighty four thousand. And we made them out of paste. A paste of different materials. And I was given lots of different recipes to follow. I was the one who was responsible for mixing the paste. And paste here was not glue, it was a paste made out of lime and tree sap and all kinds of other ingredients. And after mixing it many, many, many batches, I came to appreciate when I saw someone else's amulets, said they, who did a good job, who didn't do a good job of mixing their ingredients together. It's because I had experience making them. And it's the same way with the aggregates. When you make something good out of them, then you know them really well, and you can start seeing them in other parts of your life. And you can start seeing that the Buddha was right. When you hold on to these things unskillfully, they're going to cause suffering. And even if you hold on to them in the right way, you should make them a path. There's still some stress there, but that's the stress that's needed in order to get the mind to settle down so it can understand itself. Then there comes a point where you abandon this too. But don't let it go until it's done its work. In the meantime, try to get to know this process of getting the mind into concentration, keeping it in concentration, because that's how you come to understand the mind. Some people think, well, you get the mind quiet first, and then you do vipassana. You have to switch to another topic entirely. But that's not how the Buddha taught it, and it's not how it's taught in the forest tradition. In the forest tradition, you learn how to get the mind still, and in the process of getting it still, you begin to understand it a lot more, both in getting it still and in fighting off the things that would come in to destroy the stillness. You start becoming more perceptive of your own mind, appreciating a good state of concentration. And then you gain a sense of when the mind is not willing to settle down, what you can do to make it want to settle down. And it's in this way that insight develops. It's your sensitivity to what you're doing, seeing it in terms of the Four Noble Truths. The way you cling to the aggregates, that has to be comprehended. The way you take those aggregates and make them into concentration, that's something that has to be developed. That's a skill that you work on. So it all comes together right here. This is why the Buddha said, right concentration is the heart of the path. All the other factors in the path are its requisites, the things that help it along. Keep it right. But the concentration is where you're going to see things. After all, when the Buddha gained awakening, he was in right concentration. He was watching his breath. What's the difference between his breath and your breath? Well, nothing. The difference was in his sensitivity and the qualities of the mind that he brought to the breath. Those are the things we're working on right now. Your determination to stay here. Your strong sense of that this is a good thing to be doing right now. 
good for you, good for the people around you. And the quality just sticks with it, no matter what. Because many of the interesting things that are going to happen in the mind tend to happen when we switch our frame of reference. There's a slight moment of blanking out, and then we come back into a new frame of reference or a new world of thought. But what happens in the meantime is something we tend to miss. But when you're really consistent with your alertness and your mindfulness and your ardency, you begin to see the steps of how the mind drops one frame of reference and moves to another. And you begin to understand how the mind creates its own little worlds to live in. There again, you see the process clearly because you're fighting it. If you just allowed the mind to wander around and then just follow it wherever it went, you wouldn't learn all that much. It's when you fight against some of its unskillful tendencies and encourage its skillful ones, that's when you learn. So everything you need to know about is all right here. Just make sure that you stay right here and stay alert. And keep the right questions in mind. What am I doing right now? What is my duty right now? The Buddha once made a comparison between two types of horses. There's the thoroughbred horse. While it's feeding on its barley in the morning, it's thinking about what kind of work do I have to do today? What will my, my master want out of me? And how will I respond? The ordinary horse just thinks barley, 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 barley. In the same way, when the mind gets still, it's easy to just think still, still, still. You begin to lose your alertness, lose your mindfulness. Things can get very quiet, but you don't really know what's going on. But if you keep those duties in mind, I'm here to develop concentration so that I can comprehend what I'm doing that's causing suffering. It's all right here. It's just that I have to learn how to ask the right questions. With that attitude, you become a thoroughbred meditator. And it's the thoroughbreds who get the rewards. <laughs>